Hey guys, it's the Unsmooth Criminal. I just woke up. You can even hear my voice. Hopefully that's the last time I yawn in this entire video. Probably not though. But, <laughs> but welcome back to the unofficial part two of the series. Because I kind of didn't really do a part one. So, if you join my Discord, you can help me remember exactly where I am on the series, because I have very bad memory on when it comes to when I finish a video, especially if it's late at night. So, I just asked my Discord where I left off, and they informed me that I was just explaining what her quirks are. So, let's get into it. She explains her quirks, and... Aizawa is going, okay, then. Or, so she explained her quirks, and we skip a few days. She's moved in with Aizawa, and she's required to live with Aizawa, and legally live with Aizawa in Midnight. But she's not required to stay there 24-7. <laughs> this is going to get good. So... She prefers to be in the woods alone. But what people don't know is that she's just transforming into an animal and making a civilization with animals out in the woods. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's like a whole entire community of wolves, foxes. Uh, any kind of animal you can find in the wilderness. There's a community of them. Just out in the wild, forging together, hunting together. And when there's an attack on them, they all go to help. And nobody knows this. But hunters say that there's a legend of a blue wolf running around. And this wolf is has a star on its head. And Shooting lightning. It's shooting lightning. And that every time a hunter hurts one of the animals underneath this wolf's protection, <laughs> the entire pack that's under this wolf hunts them down. <laughs> I'm going to get this so fricked up. Oh, crap. The wind outside is howling. Um, <laughs> it's really windy at my place right this second while I'm recording this. So, yeah. That's why I'm not outside. I'm in my garage. So, she's out in the woods for like two days straight. Comes back and talks with Aizawa. Uh, makes sure that she's checking in. Because Aizawa says, I don't care where you go. As long as you're not wreaking havoc and causing other people to uh, wreak havoc on your behalf. And she goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> and she goes, so, I got something to show you and when I trust you. And he goes, okay. We skip like two, three years. She's been coming back more often and... She goes, okay, I trust you enough to show you. And she transforms into a wolf, and he knows exactly what wolf this is. And he goes, no, 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 no. You can't be. And she goes, yeah, that's me. He goes, so you're the one who's been attacking hunters. And she goes, nope. I never lay a finger on the hunters. Well, more like paw, because I'm in this form. But I never lay it. I never touch the hunters. The hunters attack my pack, and my pack attacks them back. You, you guy, he's put down my pack, one of my pack, for attacking a hunter unprovoked. But we attack when they provoke us. So, that's only when. Otherwise, we forage in the forest by ourselves. And goes, okay, so you're like a, your own little nation. And she goes, yeah, yeah, um. Uh, don't. Talk to the crows, though. They're very, very... 
special. And he goes, wait, what? And she goes, yeah. And she points up. And he goes, is that why they always follow you? Follow you? And she goes, yeah, they're very, very special. And she can understand animals because she, when she was little, she absorbed a quirk that could do that. And the crows are currently saying, you asshole, asshole, asshole. <laughs> They're just crowing that constantly. And she goes, shut up. And the crows fly away for a minute and they come back. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, um, what were they saying? And she goes, I'm just repeating the same word, asshole. And he goes, but why would they do that? And she goes, I don't know. Did you do anything against crows? And he goes, I shoo them away every time that they start peck pecking at my tomatoes. And she goes, exactly. <laughs> they steal whatever the hell they want. So when a hunter is normally loading a gun, I normally have them go and pick up the bullets and take them to wherever they store the bullets. So I probably have uh, 15,000 rounds. And he goes, okay, quick question. She goes, what? And he goes, how old are you? And she goes, um, I've seen 300 winters. I don't know. And he goes, wait, 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 wait. Biologically and looking, you don't look over 10. And she goes, mm, because I'm not. And he goes, what? And she goes, uh, I don't know. And she doesn't understand it. And he goes, okay. What is the name of your quirk? And she goes, the weakest predator. And he goes, what does it mean by the weakest predator? And she flinches at that and goes, have you ever played an MMORPG or just an RPG in general? And he goes, no. And she goes, well, the weakest, normally the weakest monster in an RPG is a slime. And she transforms into her slime form and goes, that would be me. And he goes, oh my god. I have a slime under my roof. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts busting out laughing like, like I have a freaking slime monster under my roof. <laughs> this is freaking hilarious. No one's going to believe me. And he starts laughing even harder. And she's like, oh, God. I think I made him go insane. And he goes, oh, no, no, no. I was already insane. And she goes, oh, that's good, at least. And he goes, <laughs> um, so what happens if you accept your quirk? And she goes, I, my quirk evolves, remember? He goes, yes, yes, yes. Um, do you become more slime and less human? Or more demon lord and less human? She goes, Yes. And he goes, which is it? Yes. And he goes, so both? And she goes, maybe? I don't know. I haven't tried to accept my quirk before. He goes, okay. Um, and one of the, one of the uh, hawks that she has in her group just said, there's an attack. And it just flew over as fast as possible and started to bank around to go back. And she immediately transforms into a wolf and darts off. Her abilities to heal because of a healing quirk. All the quirks that she gets, if she accepts her true quirk or her full quirk, will evolve. So, right now, all she has is Predator. She hasn't unlocked Chaos Eater from... Um, um, the orc lord yet once she accepts her true quirk her full quirk she will and i'm about to get into that so it, she biologically is 13 because she only really ages when people see her and she's been seen the last three years so she's aged for the last three years but otherwise no she hasn't really aged 
She basically lives her her entire life without aging. So we go to the forest and the panthers die. Well, some of the panthers died. Five of the wolves died. A few hundred of the squirrels, raccoons, and other ones died. And she's just devastated. She's absolutely devastated. If no one's seen the newest uh, season of that time and I got reincarnated as slime, I suggest you guys go watch it. It's a great series. I'm not really into the second season because it's not really pulling me in yet. But it's a really great series. I hope you guys enjoy it. Go see that before you continue this video. Go do that. So she runs up. And... The animals are blocking her from seeing the carnage. Because a pack of wolves... That wasn't under her control... Got pissed off that she was... So good at hunting. So they are like, oh, let's kind of get back at her for no apparent reason. So they attacked the camp. And everybody in the camp except for three. Uh, creatures, two wolves and one panther survive and she sees the two two wolves and one panthers trying to block her from seeing anything and she sees the wolves running around and she knows that they're not part of her pack and so she gets pissed off so she transforms into human form and they know that human form is a lot stronger than wolf form. So they back off and let her pass. She sees everybody on the ground dead. So she's like, screw it. And she accepts her quirk. She had so many quirks over the 300 years because she ate the hunter's dead bodies. She also ate the guns, too, so she can make guns whenever she wants. She ate the hunter's dead bodies, and so she has the strength of those hunters and their quirks, so she has a ton of quirks, but no one knew that. They only thought that she had five quirks, or six quirks, actually, because the three um, heroes, her mother, and uh, the two villains because that's all they could get out of her and now that Azar knew better he's like ah crap if she accepts her full quirk we're screwed <laughs> so her eyes go from a light blue to a dark blue her hair goes from a really light blue to a dark blue and the blue outfit that she was wearing goes black. And the angel wings she had, blue angel wings, go to a blackish blue angel wing. Yes, Rimuru is very blue. And all she says is one word. Beelzebub. That's all she says. And she expands over everything with her quirk, wraps up everything in her quirk, her gluttony quirk, and it's all dissolved. The three that were still alive, the bodies, the wolves that were not part of her pack. And she's now just sitting there crying. She doesn't feel sad. She's just crying. And Aizawa runs into the forest trying to find her. And he's yelling out her name. Shion, Shion, Shion. Or did I say she's Shuna? 
It's one of those two. He's yelling out her name. And he finally sees her. And he looks at her and asks what's wrong. And she looks at him and he finally sees the difference. He goes, oh, God. And mentally, obviously. He goes, oh, God. And she goes, everybody died. All my friends and family died. And he goes, I'm so sorry for you. Uh, what happened? And she goes, it, it was an attack from another pack. Uh, he, they viciously murdered everybody. And she starts laughing. And she's like, they, they murdered everybody. It's like the villains and heroes. <laughs> and she starts laughing crazily. Crazy. Laughing. And she goes, <laughs> animals and humans aren't that different. <laughs> They're all ruled by the seven deadly sins. <laughs> Greed. Envy. Gluttony. And she goes, oh, wait. That'd be me. <laughs> and she's just going crazy. Because her quirk erases her old personality of nice, kind, and puts in a sadistic personality that doesn't care what it does. So she's mentally, her mind is cracking under the pressure of this new personality. And he goes, okay, okay, okay. I have one question for you. And she goes, <laughs> yeah. There's really nothing for me to do now. And he goes, do you want to be a hero to change that? And she goes, <laughs> sure. And just disappears. He was like, crap, what did I just do? Two days later, we have found a crime scene that has absolutely nothing. And the news is reporting on this crime scene that has absolutely nothing. And they're like, uh, what? And the news reporter goes into more detail. They found guns, shell casings, rounds embedded in a wall, blood, no bodies, and absolutely no fingerprints or footprints from the assailant who attacked these villains who were robbing the bank. And... One of the uh, people in the <laughs> bank says that they saw a demon. She had horns. She had bat-like wings. And all she did was laugh. And torture the people who, put, who took them hostage. And Aizawa is like, what? And he's now listening intently into this. And his wife is trying to call him for her, his attention. And he's just listening intently. And before he can get any more details on the girl, his wife slaps him. Like, what are you doing? And he goes, I was trying to listen to that. And she goes, oh, uh, we need to leave. And he goes, oh, yeah, uh, it's first day of UA. Um, let's go. And it's the year before the canon year, and everything goes to canon. Aizawa kicks out the entire 1A class, and Vlad takes over 1A with the 1B class. And so <laughs> Aizawa doesn't have a class. And he's out on patrol 12, no, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. 365 days of the year. And he's doing this and doing this and doing this every day in different parts of town. Here agencies are like, why are you patrolling? And he goes, I'm looking for someone. And he put out an APB on a specific little girl. And he says that her biological age is a lot older than and what her mental age is, and she's probably the vigilante who stopped the robbery. And there's been many other robberies showing the sins 
and she sees the sin of greed as the worst one. Because the wolves wanted the food. They wanted a lot more food than they could actually handle. And they wanted the, their pack to be bigger. They just want. So she sees the greed. She sees the sin greed as the worst one. So everyone who acts upon the sin of greed. Is immediately slaughtered. Ruthlessly slaughtered. On the other sins. They just get tortured. And told if they do any other sin, she will show up and slaughter them. So villains who have <laughs> enacted on the sin of greed is immediately slaughtered by her. But villains who have act, enact on the sin of lust, gluttony, envy, pride, fury... Lust, envy, gluttony, pride, fury, sloth. Any of those sins that she identifies as a sin, she will act. But if it's just like a normal assault because there's already beef between them, she won't act. Because if there's anger on one side and anger on the other, she won't act. But if there's only anger on one side and no one did anything to the other... She acts. So, as I was like, okay, okay, okay. I got a plan. And he looks at a criminal and he says, I have a request. And this will shorten your sentence because it's life-threatening. To, you don't enact any punishment if this is successful. If you successfully get away with the money, we won't enact any punishment. But we'll limit how much money you can go get away with. And he goes, okay. What about me getting out of this damn prison? And he goes, oh, you're free too. If, if you survive, he goes, if you survive, we have a contract that says, if you survive anything that happens, you are free to get away with the money. If you get any from the vault and you will have at least one other accomplice that will get money too. If you guys get away with the money. While we're trying to take down the vigilante. And he goes, okay. Because he thinks it's got to be a walk in the park. It's going to be easy. They're going to take down the vigilante while he's robbing the bank and just get out the back door. <laughs> Little does he know. He's been stuck in prison. So he doesn't know the story of this vigilante. So he walks into the bank. He has a ski mask on. Nobody sees the bat that's on the roof. Okay, that's, that's very important. Every bank, every alley, every place has a bat on the roof. Or hiding. Or an animal hiding in some way. And since they're mentally linked with Shion, or Shuna, whatever, whatever I called her. Mentally linked with Tempest. And she's called the Demon Lord Tempest. Sin of Beelzebub. I, I know that that's a weird name, but that's what I'm going to be calling her for the vigilante name. He walks in with a gun full of blanks. And the bats are only supposed to act if they smell gun, a gun, which they know how to smell a gun, and they hear a gunshot. That's when they're supposed to activate so she can immediately get there. So, <laughs> we go to huh, Tempest, right this second. She's across town, just chilling in her pad, just waiting for something to activate so she can act upon it. But she's talking with herself. Well, she, let, let's rephrase that. She's talking with her guide. Her guide, Rose. And she's just talking with her. And Rose changed too when she became a... Accepted her true quirk. Her full quirk, actually. Because she's always had a true quirk. It's just she accepted her full quirk. And she's more like, do this, do this, do this. 
and you'll get this, and this is satisfying. So they're talking, and gunshot, gunshot. And she immediately turns off her guide and flies over to this place, and she transforms into a little mouse and scurries in through the door. No, she transforms into an ant and scurries in through the door. Gets in and waits and watches. Her turning into an ant set off the quirk activation trigger or sensor that lets them know she entered the building. So everybody busted in being like, where is she? And she's like, <laughs> oh, they want me? <laughs> and they hear a voice around them saying, are you jealous of me? And they go, no, you need to stop your antics. And Isaiah walks in going, let me, let me handle this. And she sees Isaiah and goes, what? And he hears the demanding tone and he goes, I, I want you to join UA. It's been 364 days, by the way. So it's one day before UA starts. The exams have already happened. Everybody's already lined up. But there's the 20th seat that's open still. And she goes, why should I? And it's coming around. It's going around them completely. So the voice is coming from her, the right, left, front, back. They can't find out where this is coming from. And he goes, I believe in you. I believe that you don't want to actually hurt people. And I believe that you're just mentally, you're just emotionally hurting from your friends getting hurt. And she starts tearing up without actually wanting to tear up. She doesn't feel any pain from her friends getting hurt because she blocked all those memories out. But she starts crying. And she's still a tiny ant, so there's not very much water coming. There's no, no real waterworks. And <laughs> she goes, so what do you want? And he goes, for you to join UA and to be part of my class. You don't need to come every day, just the days you feel like it. And he's laying out the groundwork and the people are still robbing the bank. And he goes, you have till tonight at midnight to come to my house because you know where it is. And tell me your answer. And I shall leave you to it. And he walks out. All the heroes walk out. And the villains are like, oh, what's happening? And she transforms from a tiny ant back to full size. And she grins. Being like, now this is the fun part. And they see exactly who it is. She's called the Blue Demon. So... <laughs> In, in the prison, she's called the Blue Demon. But outside the prison, she's called oh, Demon Lord Tempest. She kind of put that name out there. And <laughs> so... <laughs> she starts torturing, ripping them apart, putting them back together. Her... Ooh, someone she also stopped? And she's protecting Ari, by the way. She has Aerie under her protection. Because Aerie be hurting. So she added Aerie to her pack. And she's restarting her pack. And Aerie doesn't know what happened to the old one. So she took out Overhaul, by the way. So she has Overhaul's Overhaul quirk. So she's ripping them apart, putting them back together, ripping them apart again, putting them back together again. And she's doing this for hours and she's laughing the entire time and she's finally like eh I'm done and she snaps her fingers and a glob of this blue slime grabs them and sucks them in and they just disappear and she goes damn they had blanks you guys are idiots and she walks out it's currently nine ish they started robbing at six so, yeah. So, she walks into 
Aizawa is home and says, the Chargers still there? And he goes, sadly, yes, the Chargers are still there. But if you become a hero, the Chargers leave. No more Chargers. And she goes, hmm. Okay, I have one condition. He goes, what's the condition? She goes, you add Aerie to the class roster. And he goes, who's Aerie? And she goes, she's a abused child from the overhaul uh, mafia. And he goes, oh, um, hmm. Sure. She goes, okay. And she plops Aerie on the ground. And Aerie's like, ow. That hurt a little. And she goes, sorry. And she starts acting like a child to Aerie. And Aerie's like, yay, fun. And I'm going to end it there. You guys liked it? Liked the video? If you guys think I should do something different, comment. If you guys remember the name I gave her, if it was Shion or Shuna, put it in the comments because I need to know. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Talk to you later.